What is up, guys? It's Dante from the Anime Underworld, and today, for the Seven Deadly Sins fans, we got a very big chapter. I know it's been a while since I last did a chapter review, and I've mostly just been using them for shorts, but for this one, I really want to get into it, because we got a lot going on for this one. If you like Seven Deadly Sins and more Four Nights of the Apocalypse material, like, share, and subscribe, help the Anime Underworld expand, and recommend me below what else I could possibly like to cover. When last we saw on the chapter review, Things were kind of not going so well. Myrtle was going crazy, betrayed his family, and then he just, you know, through the power of love and family, he abandoned the enemy and now joined forces again. Those weird shadow cloaked hoodsmen turned out to be the White Knight, one of the four perils of Camelot. She kicked Sixtus's ass. King's power got sealed because of Killbaggin sacrificing himself and cursing King. Just so much happened, and Nasien's awakened his fairy clan powers, controlling the spirit spear and helping his dad kick ass in the end against the White Knight. So it seems like we're coming to a very close end on this arc. We start chapter 151, not at all a tragedy. We start off with what is assumedly a nuclear bomb going off. Yeah, this is what happens when the spirit spear lands you point blank in the face. King and Nasians are both exhausted. And in the wake of the destruction, we see what is left of the White Knight herself, inches away from the drug of your coughing off blood. Meanwhile, the rest of the family is starting to be healed up by Nasiens. All the siblings saying that they can no longer feel pain. Their cuts are now just scabbed. Andyan praises her oldest child by saying that he is a genius, but someone else has to disagree. Yeah, Zana and Sixtus are still kind of throbbing in pain, with Zana calling bullshit on this, and then you have Sixtus saying, Please, help me do something. I'm dying. Nacian says that there's nothing really too bad to worry about. They're both hurt, but it's just repairing the wounds and just easing the pain now. He's used, Nacian is apparently using a new drug, which just destroys the lesions of death. Even recreating missing tissue, calling it Percival. Aw, oh, that's sweet. Nacien says that he's pretty sure the pain is hard to endure, but to be patient. If anything, it's a sign that you're alive. You know, I heard that once before. And of course, coming to thank him is Myrtle, now back to being human and saying that he cured his coughing fit. But it's not going to be permanent, so they have to stock up back on more Moolian pills, which sucks, man. Maybe you should... I don't know, maybe take a break from the fairy realm if it's killing you? I I'm just saying. Last to praise him, and also assure that he's being well kept, is King. King saying that Nasiens needs to take some time to rest. He controlled Spirit Spirit Chasuble right after his awakening, so it must have taken a lot of force and a lot of effort. After my what? And everyone's just like, oh, come on, man. It's so clear. You are the next fairy king or queen if you actually decide to become a girl. Yep, we've all seen it. We all know the hints. Nasiens is truly the firstborn child of King and Nian. We get the hints now. Just accept it already. Oh my god, I'm tired of this already. Everyone pretty much just accept it, but Nasien says that if anyone is the real older brother, it's Myrtle. Even if he looks like King and Deanne. His real family were the two people, Ordo and Dolores, from his home forest. Meanwhile, Myrtle was always with them, always being the older brother. Even though he's the oldest biologically, Myrtle is the older brother in terms of family. But Nasiens is not a great liar, as he thinks to himself he's just glad that they're all safe. His mother, his father, and his siblings, too. But Nazians forgets that fairies can read mine, and they all call bullshit on him, saying that he is a terrible liar and he shouldn't be hiding something like that. But there's another big elephant in the room. Why is King, who looked like an Elvis Presley knockoff, looking like a little kid? King explains that when he killed Kilbaggin, he sacrificed himself to seal away his powers, which is why he looks more like their younger brother than he does their actual dad. The answer just is, I don't know, drink the drug of your yourself. But yeah, after being hit with a nuke, I doubt there's any left. Even though we we, we did see the file, 
right? We, we all saw the vial, right? Not cracked. But Nassian suggests that maybe they just go see Hendrickson in Leonis, which <laughs> I just love this expression from King. I don't blame him. They they don't have a that good of a relationship with Hendrickson, especially after season one. Nassian's is ready just to make a quick trip to Leonis and then, oh, oh no. Yeah, the White Knight is back. And guess what? They didn't hear no bell. I didn't hear no bell. This bitch is relentless. How many times does she have to keep getting up to face this family? Because she took a sip of the drug of yore and she's like all peppy and happy and going, hey, I figured I'd try it too and wow! Truly, the drug of yore is really a miracle drug. And boy does it show. Deanna's about to go all mom mode on the White Knight when shot sting. <laughs> they're, they're gonna die! When the White Knight just unleashes a barrage of laser beam bullets at everyone in the royal family. Uh, it, it's hard being a Deanne fan. And boy, oh boy, is this ruthless. The White Knight goes utterly and just bare bone badass and brutal upon everyone, going straight for the hearts. She explains that she was about to die, but as a last resort, she had to make sure that the drug worked. And there's only one dose left. So what are you going to do with that again? The only one left standing is Nasien's with the White Knight saying that she has a few extra shots and is about to deliver a final blow. Nasienz is starting to feel his heart's trying to stop. Death is coming. Nasienz is starting to feel regret, not being able to wake up Percival after all this time and ask him wherever he is for forgiveness. But a new voice shows up. Not gonna happen. Why do you think I went away anyway? It's because I didn't want to see you or my friends get hurt. And now you're gonna die in a place like this? That'll never happen on my watch. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm the one who needs to apologize. This was selfish of me. You all believed in me, but I left you behind. So you don't have to forgive me. Just let me fight one more time. Yes, yes, yes. Finally, after months and months of waiting for something to happen, Percival is back. And, uh... Taking that out of mind, uh, there's another thing. Percival is tall. Percival used to be the shorty. Nasi Enns used to be taller than him. But now, Percival, my man, you got tall and jacked. What kind of drugs was Nasi Enns spilling into your mouth? Okay, that came out a lot dirty than I thought it was going to be. The night of death has returned. There is now hope in the fairy realm. After a very bad ass tease that we got from Knockabout some chapters back, I'm sure you all know which one I'm talking about. Percival finally is showing his face again. Wherever he was, what was he doing? Why is he only coming back now? Two years, man. Two freaking years. This might be a sign that the Fairy Realm arc is finally coming to a close, and good. I'm getting tired of this arc. I want to see other characters again. Where's Tristan? Where's Gawain? What happened to Lancelot? What is the war going on for the rest of Britannia? Who's winning? Who's being killed off? What's going on? I want to leave this forest already, and it looks like we're about to. What's going to happen in Chapter 152? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you later, mortals.